thank you. So uh, first, how's everybody doing today? Everyone good? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I gotta stand in a circle, sorry. Anyway, so <laughs> hope you guys are all doing well. I'm so grateful to be here. I can't even tell you um, to be, have an opportunity to share with you guys from where I graduated from nine years ago and to know where my life went to now and where, I, where I'm at now. So I'd like to start with this. Everyone raise your right hand and say, I promise, I promise. to always, always follow my dreams. <laughs> and enjoy nature. Now, I really mean that sincerely. Please follow your dreams, do what you love, and your life will be successful. Like right now, I'm with, this, is, this is Miss Flex, my boa constrictor. This is my toad in, in this box. But I'm going to tell you about the dream because I only have 18 minutes. So let's do this. All right, so here. So, um, so this is my toad. Uh, this is my toad. This is, this is baseball. Everyone say hi to baseball. Yeah, this is baseball, and this is Miss Flex. She can't hear you, so she doesn't have ears, so she, you have to stomp your feet if you want to talk to her. So you guys can stomp your feet, stomp your feet. Okay, good. All right, good. So, so this, this little toad, this is not my original toad, but I remember I was nine years old, and um, my, um, my parents sent me away to sleepaway camp. I remember they sent me away to camp, and I remember when they sent me away to camp that um, – I, w I, I didn't want to go at first. I was like, I'm not going to go to camp. I don't want to go and play sports and archery and all that boring stuff. I want to like, be in the woods and have fun. So, so, <laughs> so I went to camp, and I remember the first night when we were there, I was sleeping in my cabin. I'm sleeping, and I remember I had to pee. I like, oh, I got to pee. I got to go to the bathroom. So anyway, so I, I go walking to the bathroom. And back then, I don't know what camps are like now, but I know back then there was, there was an outhouse. So we had to walk through the outhouse. So I'm walking to the outhouse, la, la, walking along, and it's dark. And then I see this one little light, and I'm like, oh, look at that light right there. And I'm looking at the light. Then all of a sudden I looked down and it was a toad hopping. I'm like, oh my God, a toad, oh my God, oh my God. And I picked it up and I was like, I want to keep this toad. But I was like, oh, my parents are going to say no. What should I do? So what I did was I took all my clothes out of my duffel bag and I put dirt in it. And then I, I, I brought the duffel bag home. And I was like, Eric, where's your clothes? I was like, um, uh, I don't know. I gave them one to my friend. She's like, what's moving in that bag? I'm like, um, nothing. And she's like, open the bag. I'm like, and open it. I was like, oh my God. And she screams and bugs out. And it was like a whole big thing. And so anyway, so, so that happened. And that was the beginning of me following my dreams. And now when I look back on it, at the time I didn't realize that what was happening, but um, when I was in fifth grade, from second grade to fifth grade, I was in special ed. I was a special ed student because, you know, I was falling out of my chair, you know, acting up and, you know, yelling during class, like, you know, randomly and like something's wrong with this kid. And it's like, nothing's wrong with me. This is just boring. And so <laughs> I don't like this class. So, um, so what ended up happening was when I was... Um, I, w I was in, uh, in, in fifth grade, I had a teacher named Mrs. Futrell, and I'll never forget her because, and I could cry about it now, but I'm not going to, but she changed my life. She really, really did. That year in fifth grade, she asked me a question. She said, Eric, what do you like? I was like, I love reptiles. And so everything evolved, revolved around reptiles after that. So she literally like just changed everything for me. She said, look, you know, I'll, I'll get you a National Geographic. So she got me the 1986 National Geographic. And you can do the math on how old I am. I'm 37. So anyway, but, <laughs> but <laughs> so she got me this. She got me this National Geographic. And I remember when she got it, it, it had a whole article about turtles. I'm like, oh my God, turtles. And that was it. And then after that, like, it, it, everything changed. And that fifth grade graduation, I got kicked out of special ed. They're like, Eric, he doesn't need to be in here. Get out. And they kicked me out, and I literally got 10 awards. I got every award that a fifth grader could have gotten that year, and I was out of special ed. And just because I followed my dreams, because I'm doing what I love, and it just, I didn't think about it. It just felt natural. It was like, the, you know, like follow your natural curiosity, like what you're feeling inside. And so it was, it was awesome. And, and um, then after that, I was like, Mom, can I have a snake? She's like, no, you can't. Actually, I'm going to put the toad down, because she's getting uncomfortable. She might burst if you hold it too long. Just kidding. But <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So let's put her here. Here, we're gonna put her over here for now. And uh, and she jumped out. Just let me know. So anyway, so um, so now, so 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 anyway, so my mom, I was like, Mom, can I please have a snake? She's like, No, 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 no. And the interesting thing is, is that when when you sit still long enough, all of a sudden your dream just happens by itself. So I kept asking, Mom, can I have a snake? No. Can I have a snake? No. And I'm like, All right, fine. Then one day we go to my my uncle's house. My uncle Eddie and Aunt Renee. We stop by, and we're going, coming from church, going, you know, every Sunday we go to church, and we go stop by there. So we go to, you know, stop by there. And then Uncle Eddie's like, we have a surprise for you downstairs. I'm like, really, what? He's like, we have a snake down there. I'm like, no way. I run downstairs, and there's a snake down there. I'm like, oh, my God, it's a snake. It w well, it wasn't this actual one, but, you know, because it was, you know, years ago. But, but it was a snake. It was a, it, was, it, was a, it was a carpet python. I'm like, oh, my God, it's a snake. This is so awesome. I really, really want to have it, but I'm not going to bother asking because my mom said no. And then all of a sudden, 
like when we're leaving, my mom says, you know what, Eric, you forgot something. I'm like, what did I forget? I got my jacket. I got everything. And she's like, no, you forgot your snake. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. And I like bugged out, had a meltdown. And I was like, it was, it was over. It was over for me after that. But, you know, then, you know, I got my snake, and I was so, so happy. But then I got greedy. See, this is the thing. This is the other part of the lesson. When you get greedy, then the, 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 the dream starts to crumble a little bit, a little bit. So I got greedy, and I'll tell you how I got greedy. So I got greedy because I wanted another snake. This is hard staying in the circle, but anyway, because I'm just walking around. But Sorry. Um, so, <laughs> so I really, really, really wanted another snake. Actually, I didn't really want another snake. It was like a natural serendipitous moment where we went to the pet store and I saw this yellow python, a little yellow python. I'm like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. Can I have it? And it's like, maybe, I'll sh- maybe I, should, I should get it. And then I'll ask my friends to come to my house for my birthday and be like, happy birthday, Eric, and then get, and bring the snake. So that's exactly what I did. It's like, we're having cake at seven. She's not going to say no while we're having cake. My mom's not going to say no when we're having cake. No way. So anyway, so my friends come by. Happy Happy birthday, Eric. They bring me the snake. And then all of a sudden, my mom walks out. Mom's like, Eric, your friends did not buy you that snake. I'm like, no, but they did. She's like, Eric, I heard you. You talked too loud. I heard your conversation last week. So you blew it for yourself. You lied and it's over. So I'm like, oh, man. But see, the thing was is that me being like how I am and just following that natural curiosity, I couldn't help myself but to want to have the snake and like figure out how I'm going to get it, even if I have to lie a little bit. Don't do that. But even if I have to lie a little bit, it, 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 you know, I did it. And then it actually worked out, though. You know why it worked out? It worked out because after I got the snake, um, two years later, mom, it, got, it grew from one foot to nine feet in two years. And I'm like, Mom, look how big my snake got. And she's like, actually, you know what? How about I, you guys want to see it? You want to see the snake? I have it. I actually have it. Hold on a second. Let me put him. Oh, anybody want to hold the snake? You can hold it. You can hold. All right, you hold for a little bit. And then we're going to get the snake out. Now, the snake is, is um, where is she? Oh, here she is. Here she is. Her name is, her name is Twinkie. Actually, I have two Twinkies today. This is Twinkie. This is Twinkie. And this is this is Twinkie, the, this is Twinkie, Twinkie, this is Twinkie the first, I'm sorry, this is Twinkie the second, this is the one I got after I got caught lying, so, um, so this is that one, this is Twinkie the first, and this, then I'll bring out, I'll bring out Twinkie the, Twinkie the fourth, this is Twinkie the fourth, oh, Twinkie the fourth, this is Twinkie the fourth, now they're beautiful guys, they're beautiful, but I have to let you know, they're illegal, so don't get any ideas about having one as a pet, because they're illegal to have as pets now, now they're beautiful animals, and the thing is, <laughs> is that, all right, she's squeezing me a little bit. In fact, she almost killed me one time. She almost killed me once. But you know what? That's the price you got to pay for following your dreams. Who cares? You know, just, just enjoy it. Do it. Now, the thing is, guys, this snake really almost killed me once. It really did. So I was cleaning out the cage, the poop and stuff like that, and I was rushing around. Now, now there's another promise I'd like you to make for yourself. As you're following your dreams, raise your right hand and say, I promise <laughs> to always take my time and never rush. Even if you have 18 minutes for a TED Talk, don't rush. Now, with that said, um, this snake literally, she, she, um, she, she actually bit me on the elbow once because I was rushing around the house because my friend's like, oh, it's happy hour. Why don't you come to Fridays? And I'm like, oh, no, I don't know. So I, I started rushing, and then there was a giant pile of poop in the cage, and so I go to grab it out, and then she bites me on the elbow. I'm like, oh, my God, like a, like a Mortal Kombat video game. Anyway, so I'm like, oh. So I pull her like that. She pulls me back in. I pull her again, and then literally I start screaming like, like, like this. Help, help, get away! Help! And I'm screaming. But I live by myself, so I'm like, what am I screaming for? So no, no point. Pointless screaming. So I, I drag her outside. I drag her to the front door. I start kicking the front door with her wrapped around me. And then my landlord says, he's like, Eric, what are you doing playing with your snakes? I'm not playing with my snakes. She's biting me. Help! Like that. And so I was like, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Before you help me, go get a camera, take a picture, and put it on Facebook. <laughs> so, so he starts taking pictures. He starts taking pictures. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You know what? Don't post those pictures because they might not book me for shows anymore. So don't do it. So anyway, the truth is, guys, that's a real true story that really happened, but I survived, and I can c- carry on following my dreams now. Uh, let, let's put these guys back. They're getting wiggly now. Everybody stomp your feet and say goodbye to Twinkie number one. All right, here. Bye to Twinkie number one, and say goodbye to Twinkie number two. Stomp your feet, though. Stomp your feet, because she can't hear you. No ears. See, no ears. Now, okay. So now, so, so that, that all happened, but then... It's interesting. I came to Stony Brook. I came to Stony Brook. I, I, I graduated in 2006. And when I arrived to Stony Brook, I remember, uh, do you know, anybody know Dr. Pat Wright? Dr. Pat Wright, she's a, she works in the anthropology department. My, my friend Sharon Pochran, they're doctors here, and, and they, they, they study anthropology. And I remember, I'm like, Sharon, I need you to do me a favor. She's like, what? And I was like, my parents are going to kick me out because I was hiding animals under the bed. Can I keep them in your office? And she said, sure, you can keep them in the office. So I had them literally stacked in the office from the floor to the ceiling. And those little tiny offices in like E&E, I don't know if you know where they are, but these little offices, all the animals are stacked in there. And so that's what started it. But they were studying lemurs. 
So they studied lemurs, but I studied reptiles. So she said, look, Eric, you can keep them here, and I'll give you reptile papers. So, like, I didn't even ask for this. And it's like the dream is just materializing. Or everything's starting to take form and, and, and happen. And so she gives me these papers about snakes and lizards. And she's like, all right, make sure you enter in your lemur data. So I'm, I'm, I'm data, 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 sorry. Anyway, so I'm entering in the data. And then I see it says, it says raffia. It says all these different things that lemurs eat. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, this is pretty cool. I'm enjoying this. And then I remember the raffia thing. Now keep that in mind. So I'm, 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 I'm working at Animal Hospital. So as I'm growing up, everybody's telling me, Eric, you should be a veterinarian. You should go to vet school. You, you love animals. You should be a veterinarian. Sharon didn't say that, but everybody else did, my parents, everyone. So I was like, I'm going to go to vet school. I'm going to be a vet. I can't wait. I'm going to be a vet. And I'm going to do this. And I struggled in Stony Brook. I was like a C plus student, kind of. Anyway, but, <laughs> but I didn't do that great. But, but, but um, the thing was, is like I wasn't following my natural path. But my natural path was in Stony Brook. I didn't realize it at the time because I was struggling. I had to go to DSS to take tests and everything was, was bad. But, <laughs> but the truth is, is that I remember Sharon said to me, you know, just, just do what you love. Follow your dreams and, and that. And I remember when I was, right before I graduated, I was working at this animal hospital and I got fired. I got fired from four jobs, actually, at animal hospitals. Not because I was doing the wrong thing. I didn't know why. I thought it was discrimination at first, but I'm like, well, even if it is discrimination, it doesn't matter. As long as, you know, we'll move on. That's what I'm saying now. At the time, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. At the time. I was very, very sad. It was actually very sad because I, I, I worked at a bunch of jobs, and they said, Eric, we like you, but we're going to let you go. Eric, we like you, but you're too hyper, and you like reptiles. We're going to let you go. And so I'm like, oh, <laughs> what am I going to do? I started feeling bad for myself. I started feeling low self-esteem. So you know what I did? The last job that fired me, it was my last semester here, and I went, I went home, and I was eating cookies and Doritos for breakfast, and like an Intermins cake, the banana Intermins cake. So I was eating a banana Intermins cake and cookies for breakfast, and then I, I flipped on the television. Now, let me just say this really quick. If you're a kid eating cookies and cake for breakfast, that sounds delicious, but if you're, you're, you're a 30-year-old guy with no job and you just got fired, it's horrible. <laughs> you feel really bad about yourself, so I felt like crap, and I'm sitting there, and I was like, okay, hold on. Let me flip on the television. So I flip on the TV. And it flips to the Tyra Banks show, and she says, this show is about following your dreams. And this is a true story. This really happened. As soon as I saw that, I had my brochures already made. I was like, I'm going to Stony Brook. I don't, I don't have a computer at the time, so I'm going to go right to the, to the, to the, to the what you call it, to the library, and I'm going to create this whole thing. And it started, and this is where I am now. This is nine years ago. Literally, it'll be nine years, December 5th, 2014, this year. It'll be nine years since I saw that Tyra Banks show, and, and, it, and it changed everything. And since then, I, I've been like to eight countries around the world. I traveled around the world, and I went to Madagascar to wor go work with kids. Now, I'm going to show you this. So here, this is, this, this is, I went to Madagascar. Thanks to Dr. Pat Wright and Sharon, Le let me keep my, my reptiles in the office. I ended up going to Madagascar anyway. Now, this is, this is my first. You can see Pat in the background. You see her right there? There's Pat in the background. She's right by the stairs. And that's me teaching kids in Madagascar the first time I arrived there. And I didn't go with study abroad. I used my own money, and I went by myself, and it was a lot less money. But Not to say not go, but I'm just saying. But <laughs> I'm just saying it was less money, and I had a great time. So anyways, I got to teach these kids, and you can see this is us teaching the kids, and this is like, this is beautiful. Like, these kids, this little boy, actually, he was really sick. He had something wrong with his face, but, um, but, but we brought this to them, and they forgot all their problems because they could feel the love from me, and I could feel it from them because they were so grateful. And you can see, look, they drew the pictures of snakes. That's duna. Duna means snake in Malagasy language, and um, I don't know what the other word meant, but anyway. Uh, but, uh, but you can see, look, there's, there's us. Now, now here, this is, that was the first year. This is the second year. I'm Skyping with, with kids in the United States. I'm Skyping with, um, with various schools, Northern Parkway School, um, um, Longwood Middle School, all these different schools on Long Island. I'm Skyping with them in this video, sharing the snakes and sharing the children. And we made these shirts for them so that way they could learn. And you can see there's a, a, a remnants of a QR code on the back there. We actually made a shirt with QR codes that go to websites for the kids to learn about the different animals from Madagascar. And it was awesome. And then you can see, hold on a second, what's the next thing? Let's see. Yeah, and see, they, they're, they're holding snakes there. And it was all fun until I went to the third year. Now, the third year I went, I spent a little extra time because I was like, I don't want to rush through the trip. And the third year, this is what happened. Um, the third year, this is what happened. I, I didn't know about the, the outside part. Oh, God, I'm going to cry. No, don't cry, Eric. Sorry. I'm sorry. But, but I, I, I didn't know how, sorry, how bad that was. And to see that really, it broke my heart. I, I cried a lot, and I was depressed for like three months um, after that happened. And I said, okay, sorry, I had to take a breath, I had to take a breath. <sighs> I'm okay, sorry, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> but look at this kids in, in this dirty 
you know, environment, and there's hundreds of kids there. A hundred people lived in this village that we see here. And then so I was like, what are we going to do, Jose? I don't know what we're going to do. I said, we have to do something. We originally went there to put in concrete floors the third trip. This was a part of a, a foundation called the Kamal Foundation, and they were helping helping me, you know, do some of the work with the kids and stuff like that. So we said, let's give them food. Let's do, do you know, let's, let's help, this, help them out. And we put 56 concrete floors in. So that worked out. That was really good. 56 concrete floors we put in. And look, now they're smiling again. So like, yes, they're smiling. We put the floors in and we, we did it for a lot of kids. And so we're going to go back there and do it again. And you can see here, these are some more of the kids that are happy and smiling, having fun. And then we started a nature program through my, the, the, the not-for-profit that I started, but I'm still waiting for the 501c3, which takes forever. But anyway, I said, I can't wait for that. We got to just make it happen. So we, we, I, I used my own money. We bought shirts for them. We did all these different things. And I just wrote a book. I wrote a book about it. So that way, yes, I wrote a book. <laughs> I wrote a book. I can't believe it. I cannot believe I wrote a book. But I've been talking about it for years. My friend Jones in the second row, we've been talking about this for years. I'm going to write a book. But then it's interesting, again, that when, when you're following the path, the path is going to come up when it's right. You know, just, just don't, don't like try to calculate every little step. Just do it. Like just, just, just allow yourself to be still and you feel it. And then it, it happens even more. Like, okay, so that, that's all for that part. But, um, but, but like, for example, um, like, like uh, I want to share something with you. I have like a, a roach in my hat. Look at this. See, there's a roach in there. Now, does anybody, you know, it really is, hold on, it's a cockroach. Look, there's a roach. Can you see the roach from Madagascar? Madagascar, here's a cockroach. Now, I know some people are gagging and grossing out and saying, oh my God, that's gross. What is this guy doing? But the truth is, I went to Marshall's one day, nine years ago when I first started. And guess what? Nine years ago, I go to Marshall's and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to go to Marshall's because somebody invited me to do a show for their event. So I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have fun. So I go to do this event right? I go to do the event, and or, or before the event, I was like, I got to shop. I have no clothes, you know? I'm going to go shopping at Marshalls. Actually, these are from Marshalls. Oh, no, I'm sorry. These are for H&M. H&M, sorry. $15. Anyway, these are $15, and this was from Kohl's. But anyway, so, but it doesn't matter. And this is from Dick's. But anyway, so, and, and these are from Dick's. Sorry. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> but, so, so I went, so I went to, I went to Marshalls, and I went shopping. I'm looking at the, at the tags on the hat, and this hat says, Made in Madagascar, Raffia. I'm like, oh my God, this hat's from Madagascar. I'm going to, like, like, scare all the kids and have fun. And the road just pooping on my head and stuff, but I didn't care. It was fine, and, and we just didn't have a good time. And we were teaching about common core standards to kids, and one teacher yelled at me, what are you doing talking about poop in the class? That doesn't meet the common core standards, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, we're having fun. I was like, and plus it does meet the common core standards because that's, that's symbiosis. Roaches pooping on the ground in the forest and, and eating raffia, that's symbiosis. I was like, that's not, that's not, that's common core. Anyway, I have one minute left, so I'm going to share with you one last thing. The last thing I'm going to share with you is, is my alligator. So remember when I told you about the tire bank? show. I was watching the Tyra show, and right after the Tyra show, I said a prayer. I'm like, dear God, please bring me an alligator. I promise I'll teach you all the kids. I promise. And guess what? I got an alligator. Oh my God, the roach is falling out. Did the roach fall out? It's on my back. It's on my back. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Where's the roach? It's behind me. Oh, there's the roach. Eric, there it is. There's my assistant, Eric. He didn't see it. But anyway, here's my alligator. <laughs> this is Wally. Everybody say, hi, Wally. This is my alligator. I can rock her. I can hold her like that. I can put her, my head in her mouth like in Gator Boys. I mean, that's not part of the dream, but I'll do it anyway. Watch. Here we go. Ready? On a count of three. One, two. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not going to put my head in the alligator's mouth, but there's only 10 seconds left, so I want to leave you with this. Please, actually, can I leave this with you? Actually, no. Just go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life that you've always imagined. That's from Thoreau, and really follow your dreams and just do what you love, and you'll enjoy your life. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye. <laughs>